It's 2021. Instead of attaining equality, uh, women represent the majority of people living in poverty and are less likely to have access to health care and education. Just how do we change this narrative? The first is for women to understand that they are not. It's important to break down all those barriers, all those stereotypes that hold women down. And it's not just a, a, a clarion call on government, it's also a clarion call on household to begin to dismantle those stereotypes. What kind of stereotypes are we talking about? The stereotype that a child, a young girl goes to school and she suddenly realizes that to be a, cap, a class captain role is reserved for the man and the deputy class captain is for the woman. Across the 36 states, you will see the governor will be the man and the deputy governor is a woman. So all of those things have become deeply entrenched in our political and in our social system. And they are not normal and they are not right. So we need to dismantle all of those systemic injustices that have held women down for too long. And it's time for parents to raise their daughters, letting them know that they are enough and they can aspire to the highest political office, to any career position, to any promising height in any industry, and they can attain that path. Relations right now at the workplaces, uh, women are still uh, being paid less uh, to men in the same work, and they do more than two times uh, on paid care and domestic work. Do you see all of that changing anytime soon? There, that's why we're calling for systemic change, because the gender pay gap is an anomaly that should never have been there in the first place. The inequality in access to employment is also another anomaly that needs to be reversed. So there is need for policies, policy changes, there's need for legal reform, there is need for constitutional amendment. And that is why women have converged in many places today in one voice, pushing for those reforms. All right. Uh, the issue of gender-based violence is still on the rise, even in this year, 2021. Despite domestication of uh, extant laws on it, what can be done to address this menace? The issue of gender-based violence is very problematic because it is something that happens in the home and the confines of the home is protected by the privacy laws which is also enshrined in the constitution so there is always almost that social restriction for you for, for external actors not to interfere in what is happening in another person's private home and that is why that particular um, delinquency has really flourished because it's something that is shrouded in stupidity and a lot of violence. And quite most often the case, victims of gender-based violence do not speak up because of societal stigma, because of shame, because of the societal expectation that they have to remain in those relationships that inflict violence upon them. So I think that is part of the message that women are pushing out today, saying that intimate, but the, any violence that happens in intimate partner relationships is no longer a privacy issue. It's a criminal offense that requires state intervention. And it's also, at this point, women are calling on state actors to intervene to formulate policies, to develop mechanisms that allow women to pick up and get help when they find themselves in these situations. All right, many thanks to you. Uh, we have been speaking with Victoria Ibezim or Hazy, or Harry rather, the Executive Director of Spaces for Change, Lagos. Uh, many thanks once again. Thank you for having me. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.